Video games for many people are a crucial part of their lives for a variety of different reasons. We play games to be educated, compete, have fun, and a whole host of other reasons in between. However, many people either inadvertently or deliberately use video games to assist them with their mental health. For ages now there has been debate on the effects of video games on our mental health, but recently it seems that the evidence is suggesting that the games we play are mostly positive for our mentality. I've been lucky throughout my life with my mental well-being, but even someone as lucky as me still utilises games regularly in various different ways to help me when I don't feel 100%. So how do video games positively affect our mental health? In this video I want to look at the various ways video games have helped me with my mental health. At the start of this global pandemic, for many people one game defined their gaming experience at the time and served as a massive distraction from reality, Animal Crossing New Horizons. With its simple mechanics and lighthearted tone, New Horizons was the perfect escape that many of us needed. Unfortunately I don't own a Switch so I haven't actually played it yet, but the game I did play that had a similar impact was actually F1 2020. Although from the outside these games are polar opposites, there is one thing that they each have in common, repetition. You see in New Horizons much of the gameplay revolves around tasks, simple stuff like watering a flower garden or fishing. In F1 2020 these tasks, so to speak, are the races themselves, which can be broken up into each lap and even each corner. After you've gotten through the start and gotten into the rhythm of the race, I find that F1 2020 is brilliant at allowing my brain to just relax and enter a state of flow. Most of the time I'm not thinking about when to brake or accelerate, it's an automatic decision built up from laps and laps of experience. There's truly something fantastic about being able to effectively play a game on autopilot and sometimes it's the relaxing rhythm my brain needs. But don't play unranked because that will destroy your mental health within minutes. <laughs> Playing games competitively is a double edged sword with regards to mental health. Recently I won my first ever league race on F1 2020 and whilst crossing the line in first place felt amazing, the 27 laps before that were absolutely nail biting packed with sweat inducing overtakes and last minute defensive moves. But I think that even though you will spend a lot of your time playing games competitively complaining about various instances of bullshit, I believe that the overall experience can benefit our mental health. Those moments of last minute goals, clutching around for your teammates or ballsy overtaking moves far outweigh the common mediocrity and disappointment we experience whilst playing competitively. I mean just look at what some of those aforementioned moments mean for those at the top of their game. Desceu, será que vai conseguir eliminação? Consegue belo trabalho, eliminação em cima do jogador, quase tenta mais double kill. Olha o Nesk, double kill pra ele. Vai partir TC, triple kill, 4K do Nesk. Impressionante. O que que tá acontecendo, Retalha? Revolt sozinho, será que ele consegue levar? Mais uma situação complicada pra ele. Tem o um pixel melhor, o Nesk. Consegue o um clutch espetacular. O um clutch que pode garantir a vantagem. Que a Black Dragons precisava para ir para Katowice. Yes! Yes! So by all means, practice, sweat and grind as much as you desire, because competing with those at a similar level to you is definitely a positive experience for your mental health.
Cruising around a map is a great way to relax whilst playing video games, and there are no better maps to cruise around than those presented to us in the Forza Horizon games. Firstly, the car physics are spot on, so you can really drift and speed around the corners with ease. And secondly, the locations are unique, fun to drive, and stunning to look at. This is probably my most utilised way of playing games to benefit my mental health. Put on some music and just drift around the outskirts of the map in some of my favourite cars. It's a nameless experience, devoid of any sort of purpose or meaning, but that's the point. It is purely an escape from everything else that is going on. You are devoting time towards nothing in particular, but sometimes that's what you need. The Horizon games allow me to do this better than anything else. Storytelling is understandably a widely utilised feature of video games, and for me none had a greater impact on my mental health than Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead 2's story centres around Arthur Morgan and his fellow gang members, desperately trying to survive and thrive in an ever-changing and modernising world. Meanwhile, Arthur himself is dealing with his own personal struggles, trying to figure out his purpose and questioning the ideals on which he was brought up by. It's truly a memorable tale, but what had such an influence for me was how Arthur dealt with tuberculosis. At the time a deadly disease, Arthur was dying in the midst of an internal crisis within the gang, with multiple members dying, working undercover and questioning the gang's leader, Dutch. Arthur's way of dealing with all this noise was simple, do as much good as you can before you pass away. And so Arthur spent the final chapters of his life selflessly helping gang members and other strangers he came across, as at this stage it was the only impact he could have on this world. At the end, Arthur found inner peace with this, and as a player I could empathise with this and to be honest, it had a really positive impact on my mental well-being at the time. It was clear that Arthur had made the right choices, and it served to me as a reminder of the power of making good, compassionate decisions for other people, at the cost of your own self-interests. I actually started playing Red Dead 2 when my mental health was at its worst. The previous summer I had attempted to start this very channel, and quite frankly it was unsuccessful. YouTube had always been this dream job that I had envisioned, and suddenly that dream was seemingly gone. So I naturally gave up. Two months later I entered my final year in school overweight, having wasted away the summer and had no goals for my future. By Christmas I was still overweight and on course to not obtain the points I needed from my planned college course. And that's when I started playing Red Dead 2. It distracted me when I should have been doing schoolwork, but for some reason the game helped me immensely. By March I finally began to lose weight, and around August I received the news that I had obtained the points I needed for college. Seven months later I finally mustered up the courage to try YouTube again, and this time, it worked. I don't want to say that Red Dead 2 was the reason I began to turn things around, but it was definitely a catalyst for change. Why? I don't know. But Arthur's story stuck with me, more than any other video game story has, and I think that without Red Dead 2, I wouldn't be the same person I am today. Video games are amazing, and quite frankly I'm convinced without them, my mental health would be a lot worse off. I can't thank them enough for simply existing, and I'm so grateful to have experienced them from an early age. They will continue to act as an escape, a method of zoning out from our harsh reality, and forgetting all the problems or worries I might have. So with the pandemic dragging on, and mental health a bigger issue than ever, Take time out of your day to play some games, in any way you see fit. You might be surprised at how positive an effect they can have on your mental health.